Hello there, how are you? This is Anthony Mwerore here live on Facebook and also live on Book Place on Facebook. And uh, yes, Anthony Mwerore, the author of Be Good for Good <laughs> uh, Stories of Goodness with Lessons of Life uh, on Life and Today we have a guest with us. Give him one minute. And, uh, hey, guess who's here? Oh, you're upside oh. down. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to figure out what my camera's doing. You're I... doing good. You're doing good. You're doing good. I've just shared a video on uh, Book Place right now. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and here is Jonas Soul, best-selling author, international acclaimed editor. Yes, the author of uh, Sarah Robert series. Uh, yes, and uh, welcome here. It's a pleasure to have you in our life. So, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, wonderful. I'm well too, and uh, I'm grateful. Yeah, it's a wonderful day. It is Tuesday. Uh, we have some people who have who are already jumping in. We have uh, Christina who's liked the video from the very past few minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Christina, for liking the video. And uh, everyone else who's coming on, we'll be appreciating you as we move along. Welcome to this live with Jonas Soul, where we are going to talk about books and nothing but books. So. Thank you very much. It's been some time from the last time that we uh, had a chat. Yeah, a bit, mm -hmm. bit, yeah, a bit some time. Those of us uh, who are following me on Facebook might have seen the previous video that we did with Jonas Soul. It was before I published my book. <laughs> I, 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 sh I should warn you about one quick thing. Uh, yes, we've we've been having internet trouble recently, where okay. it drops out. Um, we've called uh, Nova and yeah. o Ote or O T E or whatever. Is Ote and yeah, Ote? Okay, and uh, so we're supposed to see somebody to repair it. So anyway, if it drops, yes, I'll take two or three minutes and then I will hit to connect again. Okay, because been... sometimes it drops for a couple minutes. Okay, I believe it's not going to drop. It's going to respect us. <laughs> Good. Let's let's go with that. No drops. And since it's Jonas Soul who is uh, speaking, he's going to respect it. <laughs> let's let's do that. <laughs> You're too kind. Yeah. So yes, uh, how is your writing today? How, have you written today? Of course, a writer writes every day. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, not so bad, actually. Actually, yeah. the the old. Uh, axiom that a writer writes every day or should write every day uh, is terrific and very good and motivating. But at the, but the truth is um, I don't write every day. Okay. Un unless I'm writing a novel. Okay. If I'm writing, actively writing, I've already typed chapter one and I'm writing, I write every day till yeah. the novel's done. Till the novel's done. Mm -hmm. But okay. uh, this is my week off actually. Um, yeah. I, I usually have, if I'm not writing a book, I'm editing someone else's book. And I just finished um, editing my last manuscript. I had edited like, I don't know, seven manuscripts in the last month and a half and oh. wrote two of my own. So okay. I've been so busy that yeah. uh, I chose to take this week and I'm doing nothing but um, exercising, going out for walks, uh, reading. I'm this whole week I'm doing nothing. Oh, thank you very much. And we really appreciate you taking this time to come and uh, have a chat with us. I personally appreciate so much for even the role that you played in assisting me write, finish writing my book and publishing it. And actually, thank you for writing the forward. So thank you very much mm. for all that and for this time that we are having here, which I believe is going to be a benefit to those who are watching us this day and those who are going to watch the recorded version of this video. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you.
Yeah, so from the time that I wrote my book and published it and uh, people are reading it, they are appreciating it, they've been asking me a few questions which I would uh, forward to you with uh, more experience that you have that you could uh, assist some people. And also those who are watching us right now live, please you can ask a question about books and Jonas will be more than willing to reply. And believe you me, Jonas is a passionate speaker <laughs> mm. yeah so um one of the questions that i've got from people who've read my book and uh are excited and inspired and they are telling me hey anthony i also want to write a book but how do i begin so jonas how, how does one begin writing a book well there's there, there's two answers to that uh yeah the simple answer is turn on your computer, mm -hmm. open up a document like Word or Pages or Scrivener, yeah. have a blank page and start typing. You know, I say that's the simple answer because um, I remember that was something Stephen King once said, and this yes. is way back before I wrote any books. Uh, okay. He said, get in front of the white screen, take your fingers, hover them over the keyboard, yeah. and then start typing. And yeah. whatever comes what could be or may be the beginning of your novel. And so I did that. I actually sat there and I looked at the blank page and I thought, okay, um, there's a guy and he's walking down the street. Okay, so I typed that. And oh. now he's doing this. And now he's doing that. And my novel started. Okay. And uh, it ended up being a book that's published today. Okay. So that's the easy way. Mm -hmm. I'd say easy because there's not too much thought. There's yeah. not too much time, you know, but the more complex answer to that question is um, how does one start? Well, that you must, you must, uh, you know, come up with something that you feel that should be written. You know, what is unique? What, what, you know, nonfiction, fiction, what are you looking to write? What, what do you read? This is also important. I mean, I, okay. what I've been drawn to as a personal reader is what I write. I've always enjoyed thrillers. And so uh, ever since I was like 10 or 12 years old, I've only been reading thrillers. I started before that with Hardy Boys. So they were yeah. like de young teenage detectives. And so this is something that I've always enjoyed reading. And I, by the time I was 20, I was like, hmm, I wonder if somebody's written a book about this or about that. Wouldn't that be so cool to read? And oh, I would, I'm looking for that now and I can't find it. So I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just write it. So okay. sometimes you have to just come up with something that uh, hasn't been done or, you know, and so anyway, think of something or come up with something or even like yourself, nonfiction. Um, mm -hmm. And you came up with something that is very beneficial. And, and, uh, and I think that uh, you had a, an arc or a process of learning through your experiences in life from your time as a, as a youngster to today. And you were mm -hmm. able to take a look at, at th that, that, I think it was the tobacco tree or some kind of tree that went through these life cycles and apply it to your life and the life yeah, cycles. Mm -hmm. so, so once you, uh, once you do that, it's really liberating to get in front of the computer, the white screen, or you know what? Some people take a pen and paper and just start writing. Okay. Yeah. So whoever asked that question, you've had the answer <laughs> there. There's always two ways, or there are different ways of approaching a subject. And this one of writing, you can start by just getting on the computer. Right, right now that you're watching this uh, live, you can just get into onto the computer and say, on this day, I listen to Jonas Sol and Anthony, mm -hmm. and uh, book starts. <laughs> yeah, you could, do, you could type that. Yeah, or you can have a subject and... Uh, Put it down, lay points to cover in the subject, and you come up with a book. Indeed. Now, being a nonfiction writer, a thriller writer in this case, uh, which I, I want to believe that you go in the easy way, the way you started. You started uh, from in, in the initial stages when you just went on to the computer and started writing. Is that how you write your novels presently? No, it's, it's a little different presently. Presently, okay. I, often come, I often come up with uh, the germ of the idea. 
the, the, mm -hmm. the and 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 like I often will think of the what, what I call the big bad. So what is going to be the big bad? So let's say um, in in uh, in book 15 of my Sarah Roberts series, the big bad is a cartel. So in a, a Mexican cartel. Okay, so once I come up with the big bad, then I come up with what are the stakes? What are they doing? What I, I think about all these kinds of things. How does it affect my mm -hmm. character's life? Um, you know, all the way down to the cartel's leader and what's his name and how much of a villain will he be? So a lot of those things okay. I take into consideration um, and I make a few notes. I don't ever outline a book. I never outline. Um, I don't yeah. believe in plotting. I don't, for me, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. I have other writers, it does work. But I, I never okay. plot or outline a book. I, I literally just come up with an idea. Okay, where do I want to start it? Oh, I know where I'll start it. I'll start it here. And this is where the threat is against my main characters who are the um, protagonists. And I start the book. And sometimes, like, by the end of the book, I, I don't know if the bad guy is going to be arrested or if he's going to be killed. Or I, I generally don't know. I, I could be 90% um, into the book and I'm almost done. I'm down to like three chapters left and I still don't know how it's going to end because I don't ever plot. So how do I start? I often start with the big bad and work my way from there. Like if oh, there's going to be a book funny. about people who are, are being mis a missing or a kidnapping ring or the first scene will be somebody being kidnapped. And so we, I go from there. And do we save that person or not? And if we don't and they find a body, well, then the stakes are raising. So, and I generally don't know until I'm typing. Oh, that's good. And I think it speaks to someone who's been waiting to have the whole book completed in his mind or her mind before they get started. Mm. And Jonas also oh. says you don't have to know the end of the book so that you get started. <laughs> I think that sometimes waiting until you know the whole book Mm -hmm. uh, that stops people from actually doing the writing. I think that, for instance, there are many times when yeah. a huge plot point or a plot twist came up. I would have never thought of it weeks before, but I'd already mm -hmm. written, say, 40,000 words into the novel, and I was, oh, my goodness, this could happen. Mm -hmm. And if that happened, this would happen. <gasps> and then I'm so shocked. I get goosebumps like, oh, wow, this is great. But I would have never known that had I not already written 40,000 words. I, I don't think that you can actually, the, only the extreme professional outliners can, can really do a whole book in an outline and then type it up. And guys like James Patterson, yeah. he, he apparently outlines every chapter before he writes okay. a book. And, um, and, and I, I, I just, yep. and then there's guys like Stephen you, King or, Lee Child, they never outline a book. In fact, they have no idea what's going to happen chapter to chapter. So I'm more of that kind of writer. I have no idea. Many, many times, actually, I'll be halfway down my book and I'll type chapter 32 and I'll sit there and stare at the screen. Okay, what's happening now? I don't know. Sometimes I have to take a half hour, go make a cup of coffee, come back to my desk and I, I don't, well, I haven't had a chapter with Sarah for a while. I haven't had a chapter. Okay, well, let's do this one. Okay, so what are they doing? I don't know. And sometimes it's uh, the next day when I start typing again, because I, I really don't know what's going to happen. And this is, uh, you know, I think I just put a quote on the, the um, books page, um, on, our, on our page. I just put a quote that said um, something Stephen King said, strap your seatbelt in and go for the joyride of the, of the, of the book where yeah. it's without plotting. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where real, um, real thrillers and real fiction comes from. So anyway, that's what I do. Okay, so I want to believe that the majority of uh, the novelists uh, just begin writing the novel and then they find their way through the forest. Yes, there are outliners, but I don't know what the percentages are. On the lower percentage should be. Yes, I, I okay. would hope so, but... Oh, good. So um, on the subject of uh, publishing, because uh, the last time that we spoke, we did not uh, touch much on the publishing. Yes, we talked about the traditional publishers and self-publishing. Now, for someone who could be 
wondering how do I get started when I don't have the finances, when I am, uh, I don't have uh, some connections to some big publishers, how do I get started? Well, de definitely there's, there's two ways. There's self-publishing or traditional, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. Traditional, you, you don't need a lot of money uh, yeah. up front yourself. Uh, and, you know, I, I think a lot of people know what that means is, you know, you're going to query, you're going to send a query letter to an agent and you're going to try and get an agent. And then the agent will then go to a publishing house and try and sell your book. And you, you don't need any money for that other than some time research and sending out a bunch of queries to yeah. agents. Uh, there are publishing houses that will take your book without an agent. And so now you're submitting directly to publishing houses. Again, not a lot of money, if any, actually, I, I really don't think there's a lot. Um, but if you yeah. do go self-publishing, as a self-publisher, you are going to need some money. Uh, what would that budget look like? It depends on um, depends on several things, but uh, I think at least three thousand dollars a book, if you're going to self-publish, is an uh, is a good three thousand American. So if you're in Europe, you want to use the euro. Euro, it's going to be twenty five hundred. It depends on you, you've got to get cover art. Yeah. Uh, cover art, you can do it yourself, but I recommend a professional cover artist for a book cover. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to look professional. If you put it up on Amazon and you've done a nice graphic design job, um, sometimes it, it, it works, but sometimes it, they say that the odds are uh, doing it yourself, you don't get as good results. But then there's some that are amazing. So who knows? Um, but I always pay for my cover art. You need okay. a good editor. Editors, mm -hmm. a good editor, they say, start at around a thousand dollars and go up from there so mm -hmm. i mean I, I i know i've paid i've paid thousands upon thousands in editing it, it, you know what for self-publishing it's like you're starting a business yeah you're starting your own business mm -hmm. and you 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 want to um invest in your company and so yeah. you want to invest in your book um so i do believe you, you can do it on a budget no problem you can pay yeah. four or five hundred for editing Mm -hmm. I just think with editing, you get what you pay for. And sometimes a $500 edit, uh, there's a lot of things that are going to be missed. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, professional, I, I, I used a professional editor in, in New York um, okay. years ago when things were, um, yeah, it, when things were not as expensive and I paid 2,500 American for my first edit. Mm -hmm. That was my first round. Once I did all the edits, I sent it back and paid 2000 for the second round. Yeah. Once I was done those edits, I paid another 2000 for another round. And that was just one yeah. book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is, and, you know, but that book sold. That book also sold almost 2 million copies. And now that book has a Hollywood deal. Uh -huh. that's, that's so quite... they're making a movie with that book. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You know, you got to pay. You got to get, you, you've got to get a great cover and a great editor. And, and if you're looking for success, if you're looking for financial success, if you're looking for uh, to quit your day job, well, then you've got to, you know, do this professionally. If mm -hmm. you just wanted to get your book published, oh, you, you can do it on a shoestring budget for sure. But I've always wanted to do this as a living. And I have been for 10 years. Oh, wonderful. So this is something the new uh, writer, the one who wants to publish, should be ready for. I mean, once you've written your book, you've got to, uh, to have it edited. You have got to... Uh, plan how you're going to publish and invest on editors and uh, proofreaders and uh, until you make it to the professional level so that you can get it published. So right. someone has to be ready for that. So I want to appreciate a few things who are here. We have, uh, uh, apart from Christina who joined us from the beginning, we have Mary Mwangi, thank you very much. He's saying, uh, whoa, interesting. We have Despina. P square, uh, saying interesting also. And uh, yes, uh, Mary is uh, saying good advice. So the good advice is that if you're planning to start a business, uh, you should invest in the business that you're planning to start. That includes writing and publishing. Mm -hmm. You don't just uh, start on zero. And, <laughs> and it also and, it also includes um, advertising things um, and also business cards. I'm, mm -hmm. I think you've shown it on some of your TikToks, but I mean, I pay extra money for a card that opens like a book. Yeah, opens like a book and mm -hmm. has, you know, I, I pay extra money for advertising. Getting a, an advertisement on BookBub 
is uh, for a 99 cent sale for one day on the BookBub email is over $900 American I have to spend for just one yeah. day on their email. Mm. Uh, so there's a lot of money you have to spend to advertise. You don't have to spend, you don't have to spend that much, but yeah. I mean, there's Facebook ads and different things people do, but it is like running a business. We were actually going to come there because uh, at some point, for those of you who don't know, we've got uh, a new group, which is uh, called Book Place. It has over 40,000 uh, members, which we've uh, co uh, partnered with uh, Jonas, Jonas Sol in the uh, past few days. And um, a few days before, I posted a question asking the people there, the authors in the group, what is your biggest challenge? And over 90% of the authors talked about marketing and sales. Mm. So this is something that could be very helpful because uh, someone is going to get started on a book right now after watching this video, I believe. He's going to get the inspiration and start on a book and uh, invest in it as you've advised to invest. But after it's published, and then how does it get to the reader? <laughs> I mean, how does it sell to the millions that John has sold? Has sold? Well, that, that is a great question. And it, it is very challenging to, to mm -hmm. do that, to get to the readers. Um, but one thing I learned early was that it also, I'll get to that one thing I learned early, but it also depends on how many books you want to write. Yeah. Um, or you feel that you are going to write. How many books are in you? For instance, I'll give you a quick side example. When a publisher is, contemplating whether they're going to buy your book or not one of the questions mm -hmm. they asks they asks one of the questions they ask is mm -hmm. um what's your next book about and what yeah. they're actually asking you is are you going to write another one yes. or they they want to because publishers don't invest in a book they invest uh -huh. in an author because okay. they don't want one from you Publishers will often yes. sign two, three, or four book deal, sometimes even a five book mm -hmm. deal or more. I've even heard of a 10 book deal with an author. Um, mm -hmm. So publishers want more than one book. That being said, yeah. how many books are in you? This is where your marketing starts. And the reason I say that is because one of the best pieces of advice I ever got, um, I, was, I yeah. was on my second book at the time. I'd only written two. I was working on my third. And I read that the best way to advertise yourself or to promote yourself is to write another book. Yeah. And I scratched my head, write another book. Well, I'm doing that. How does that get me advertising? What they were talking about was um, the more novels. Okay. I'm talking non, I'm talking fiction now, but yeah. even nonfiction, even nonfiction, the more books you have out there, the more times people see your name, your brand, the more it becomes trusted or people become comfortable or confident with it. Um, mm -hmm. I once, I also read that back in 2011, that, uh, once you have 10 books, you have an internet presence once you have 10. So okay. what I did was I got off Twitter. I got, this is 2011. I was doing so much Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, but, well, Instagram 2013, but I ended up cutting that all down to like one hour a day and spent the rest of mm -hmm. my day writing so that I could put out book after book after book year after year. So yeah. I did that. Once I got to 10 books, my sales were enough that I didn't have to work anymore outside the house. Once I got mm -hmm. to 12 books, that internet presence, I actually got my first email from Hollywood. Once I hit 12 books, once I hit 14 books, I was flying to Los Angeles to meet mm -hmm. with the studios. Then I got to book 17 and 18 and 20. And now I'm getting the notifications that they're, they're, they're getting ready to make the movie. All okay. this happened because how do you promote yourself? I wrote another mm -hmm. book. I didn't do any Facebook. Actually, I did my first Facebook advertising just a few weeks ago, and it didn't really do anything for me. Okay. I've sold millions of books because I've written a lot of books. And the mm -hmm. other thing is once you have a reader who likes you, because as soon as they see I've got five other books or 10 other books, they race out and buy, buy another one. They try it. And they're like, oh, wow, I really like this one. So then they go and buy two or three more and they love those. Then they buy the rest. 
Uh, so the best way to promote yourself and find success and have multiple sales is to write more. I believe in that. Yeah. Th then there are other things you can do. There are a list of things you can do, and there are many things that I've done. Um, I'll mm -hmm. give you a couple quick ones off the top. One is when I travel, you don't even have to travel to do this. You can do it from your hometown. But when yeah. I travel, I often go onto Facebook or Instagram and say, who wants a postcard from Rome? Because I went, I went to Rome. I went to Denmark. And then I get, you know, I'm going to cap it at 100 people. So yeah. private message me if you want a postcard. So what happens is I get all these messages. Within 10 minutes, I hit 100. And I'm like, okay, stop, stop, stop. But I fly to Rome. I buy 100. You can buy postcards in bulk many times. I sit and quickly address them all. And I say, hey, thanks for reading, Jonas, whatever. I mail them all out. It, there, it's an expense, yes. But the cost of 100 stamps and 100 postcards is very small. And what yeah. happens is... All these people around the world, a week or two or three later, get the postcards. They take a picture and say, oh, my goodness, one of my favorite authors sent me a postcard from Rome. And they put it all over their social media. And so suddenly the name Jonas Saul went all over social media talking about how I sent out postcards. I do this all the time. I do, I do Christmas cards. Who wants a Christmas card? Um, I, I'm in Greece right now. I actually just sent four postcards to readers last week. Mm -hmm. I'm constantly doing this kind of thing. Okay. Um, another thing I do is I add readers' names to my books. Yeah. So once I have a reader who's shown up on social media or they've messaged me or they um, emailed me to say thank you so much, I say, hey, can I use your name in one of my books as a character? Uh, and we discuss that. And then the next book comes out and there are characters. And then what do they do? They tell everybody, I'm in a book. And they race out and tell all their friends and everything. This is a great way to be connected to your reader, but it mm -hmm. also does help with um, the advertising of your of your name because people are talking about your book. Yeah, really do anything you can to get people talking about your book, or your books, or what you're doing. Word of mouth is the number one way. Um, constantly going on social media and just saying buy my book, buy my book. I, I don't. It's never worked for me. I don't know any author who says it. And if it does work for them, are they making seven, ten thousand dollars a month in royalties by yelling out buy my book? No, they're not. There's nobody doing that. Um, and so it's, it's just, uh, you know, yes, if you have a sale, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, my book's on sale right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll even do that. I'll put it on Facebook. Hey, if you've missed this one, it's 99 cents right now or something. Sure. But I mean, it's, it's, it's not def definitely not a good strategy to constantly be just going out and saying, I wrote a book. I wrote a book. Please buy it. That generally uh, can fall flat on its face. That's all. It's better to keep writing and get another book up and, or, or talk about it. Put a picture of your cover and, and say, I'm so happy with the sales or I'm so this kind of thing works. I'll yeah. often put my rank. If my rank is doing well on Amazon, I'll post that on social media. Very happy with my readers. I'm so grateful. Look at this rank. Or if I win a contest or something like that, definitely will post my covers. So. Oh, thank you very much. And I agree with you on uh, when you talk about uh writing your second book i'll tell you the challenge that i've got and i've also got the challenge from you is that uh, most of the people i mean more than 70 percent of the people who have read my book and finished my book end up with this question so when is your next book right <laughs> so that means if i have already two books they will finish that one and take the second book the third book going on and on so this is what I believe, what you said, I believe in that. And uh, yes, it's a challenge to me. I should be releasing my uh, next book the soonest. I don't know when, but I, it's a challenge that I have to live to because uh, it's come from very many sources. Oh, I can't believe how many people have told me or have asked me, where is your next book or when is it going to come out? <laughs> Well, and the thing to remember is you, you mm. want to make sure that that book comes out in a timely fashion, um, yeah. six months or nine months. If you wait a year and a half, people forget about the book that okay. they read. People might forget. Yeah. It's important to bring, for instance, um, I, I, release, I release six to nine books a year. And yeah. so you're looking at every two to two and a half months, I'm having a book come out and, and sometimes faster. Like I, I've got one in, in May 30. I'm skipping yeah. June. I've got one July 28th and I've got one August 28th. I've got three books coming out in four months. Now, mind you, one I've already written the, for May. The one coming out in July I wrote last year. 
and the one coming out in August I'm working on. So anyway, I have three books in four months. As soon as the book comes out, within one day, I often get messages on Facebook or emails saying, when's the next one? <laughs> because we're, 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 we're reaching out to people that are, are um, avid readers, but there's binge watching on Netflix. There's, for instance, when Netflix puts up a new season, all 10 episodes show up at once. So people yeah. can sit and watch them all. People want this with their reading experience too. They want to read a book. And then I've found in my experience as an author, um, they, they, they want the next one right away. And I can't yes. put out 10 books at once so they can just sit and read them all. So we uh -huh. have to wait, but even two months sometimes is, is agonizing for some readers. Okay. Oh, so thank you very much. Uh, Christina has a question. And I believe she agrees. She's uh, taken that advice of uh, uh, getting out your book as soon as the other one, as <laughs> soon as possible, as, the, uh, as soon as you release the first one. But she has a question. Uh, she, mm -hmm. And she says, but what if not all your books are, are as good as the previous books? I'm so, I might have missed that. What's the question? And now the question is, uh, she writes the first book and then writes the mm -hmm. second and a third. Now, the second mm -hmm. and a third books are not as good as the first one. What about that? That's what she's asking. Oh, well, for me, I try to make sure when I'm writing the next book mm -hmm. that the characters evolve or that the story evolves. <clears throat> For me, I try to think of writing as a muscle yeah. and you're exercising that muscle when you're writing all the time. Mm -hmm. So once this book is done, when I start working on the next, I try to make sure that it's better. It, 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 it's better than the one I just wrote. And yeah. then when I, I've written something that I think is better and really good, mm -hmm. then I, I send it out and publish it. When I write the next one, I, I try again to make sure that that's better than the one before. Um, okay. Sometimes you may not always be successful, depending mm -hmm. on some readers, um, that the second or the third may not be as good. Um, but the goal definitely is to be better after each one. And, and again, sometimes that doesn't happen. Uh, but uh, I, I, I otherwise I really don't know how to answer that other than to say to just give it your best and try to make sure that you're writing something better each time. I mean, there are several authors out there that have written an incredible first book and they couldn't mm -hmm. catch up. They couldn't, uh, like for instance, uh, I think Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen was an incredible book for her. I, I don't know if that was her first or not, but that, that was the first one that hit number one in New York Times. But her next okay. one came out and it didn't do as well. Uh, and some say it wasn't written as well. So this, this can happen to some authors. Yeah, but uh, basically you want to put it like uh, the more you do something, the better you, the mm. better you get at, t at it. And especially if you're paying attention, if you have that drive, if you have the will to improve, then you'll find a way to improve. So your next yeah. book is going to be better than the previous one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and um, yes, we also have Bill. Bill Rigris is here. Vasily's voice, the one on. <laughs> ah, no, 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 no. Yeah, saying good advice. We thank you, Bill, for being with us here. Thank you very much. And uh, yes, we have uh, Mary Mwangi who is saying uh, she's waiting for my next book. <laughs> no, good. And so you're you're almost done your next book, are you? Um, good question. I'm nowhere near <laughs> being done. <laughs> oh, okay. I should, okay. Improve, I should improve the pace. I should improve the pace. So Christina was uh, asking, but is uh, I think that question is already answered because she was asking again. But is it quantity or quality that matters for an author? That's that, that's a question. Uh, kind of, I, yeah. I would always I would always say qu uh, quality. Mm -hmm. Always quality. If yeah. you have an amazing book, but you can only write one a year, mm -hmm. well, then just do the one a year. Okay. It has to be, it has to be quality. Yeah. I have an assembly line kind of thing happening with my books. Like the one coming in July, I wrote last February. Um, yeah. I, no, not last February. Sorry. A year and a half ago, February, like February mm -hmm. 2020, I wrote that one. Yeah. Um, what I'm saying is, I write a book and then it's going to an editor and beta readers and I'm already working on another one. 
and the other ones from the past are being, you know, dealt with. And anyway, um, so sometimes it looks like I might write three books in four months, but I'm not. I'm, I'm like writing one book. I'm just okay. releasing a bunch that I've written from a long time ago, a okay. year ago, six months ago, three months ago, whatever. Um, so it's always quality. The book has to be good. Yeah. Uh, if you're just pumping out a book a month, you're writing 12, a year, 12 books a year, and they're not good, you're wasting your time. Because the reviewers will put on there, oh, one star, oh, the, this wasn't edited, or oh, there's no story here, or whatever. It, it, unless you can do one book a month, and it's amazing, well, right. then do that. But definitely quality has got to be number one. Ah, good. And you are on another level. I mean, when you're talking about uh, doing a book last year, I know that you've already done a book for 2022, when we are in 2021, uh, May. Mm -hmm. You've already written one for 2022. That, that's, that's on a higher level. <laughs> yeah, Even though yeah. We understand it's your full-time job or full-time hobby job. Right. <laughs> but yeah. that's on another, another level, writing a book for a year to come. Anyway, that's, that's, that's quite good. So as we proceed, okay, I want to I appreciate other people who are here. I can't see their names, but as you're watching <laughs> now, as you watch later, Please feel appreciated that you've taken your time to watch this video. And uh, yes, we are moving on. What, 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 what advice would you give a first time, right? Okay, someone who's, uh, I mean, uh, all the advice that we are giving is for people who are first timers, but what greatest advice would you give someone who's just getting started on writing, publishing in this case? I think that the, the one of the best pieces of advice I ever got, and it really helped me, was um, remove all doubt. Mm -hmm. Doubt is what kills all, almost all, every author I've ever met. I do mm -hmm. writers' conferences around North America. I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of authors. Uh, doubt or fear, I call it doubt though, uh, doubt is what stops everybody. Doubt is what mm -hmm. creates writer's block. Doubt is what causes writers will start a book and they'll be five or 10,000 words in and enjoying it yeah. and really having a good time. Then they may start to doubt that they can finish it or mm -hmm. geez, I don't know what I'm going to do with this bad guy or is my main character believable enough or, and they mm -hmm. start going down these questions and then they start to doubt and their word count suffers. Then they think, well, yeah. I'll take a week and I'll, I'll reread what I've written to get my head back into it. And, before you know it, they're editing and they spent a month playing with it. They've got no new words and it all came from doubt. Mm -hmm. um, finally, you may finish it, but then you have doubt. Can you publish it? That, number one piece of advice is forget about all that. Forget all the doubt and just write. Just have fun. Just get it on paper. Uh, John, uh, I think it was Steinbeck who said, uh, or it was King, he said, uh, vomit the words onto the page. Work it out later. Um, Shakespeare once said, uh, doubt is your biggest traitor. And he said that you will lose what you oft might win if you allow doubt in your life. Yeah. I actually thought that doubt was a traitor and it was trying to thwart me from what I was doing. So mm -hmm. I gave doubt a funeral. I literally gave it a funeral and I buried mm -hmm. it. And I had no doubt that I would make it. I would be a, I would be a best-selling author. I would be on the charts. I would have a Hollywood deal and I would write dozens of books. And I started mm -hmm. with book one and I said, I'm not going to have any doubt. I'm just going to write like a maniac and do whatever I want. Cause it's going to work. Yeah. I have no doubt. And it did. So I believe that doubt is what kills almost every dream I've heard from a writer. And I think that you can well, take that into any, for any self uh, employment, any, if it's a painter or if it's, it doesn't matter what, you know, doubt is what uh, it really stops us. And so I think you need to get rid of doubt. And I think I have some encouragement to someone out there because uh, I love to give out a secret that this was not my first book to write. I wrote my first book 20 years back. Wow. I talk about that in the book, uh, uh, Be Good for Good. But mm -hmm. the first book that I wrote is still a manuscript. Mm. So that could coming out uh, somehow improved 
But maybe it's the doubt that stopped me from uh, publishing that book during that time, because I thought maybe it's not up to par. So this is the way I'm looking at it. How I came to publish this present book, The Big Good for Good, is that I got connected with some authors who are doing it, who are killing it in the field. I got connected to one George, who is a friend on Facebook. And then somehow, I mean, and I, I am saying this time is divine. I mean, the, the writing of my book has been divine because it's about the same time that I got connected with George, which is the same time I got connected with Jonas online. And so having been connected with people who are doing it, and believing in what they are doing, and then them getting to look at your work and telling you, yes, you are on the right line, that will give you the courage and the motivation to move and do it. Because by the time I was just about to publish, I gave my manuscript to Jonas, who, who told, him, uh, told me, hey, Anthony, this is a very wonderful book. And so I believe it's a wonderful book and I had it published. <laughs> Terrific. So, so I think that's one of the ways of dealing with doubt and get moving. Have mm -hmm. someone who is doing it, be connected with people who are already doing what you want to do. Yeah. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. Motivated. Yeah, so I was going to ask you about that question that I touched on, on motivation. How do you get the motivation to keep on moving? Apart from that idea, that... Um, Tip mm. that I give someone out there. How do you keep moving even when you are not connected to other? I mean, you've you've gotten started, but you 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 the people you are linked with, you are not talking on a daily basis. So if you if I tell you to write a book today, I won't be there tomorrow to ask you whether you wrote a paragraph yesterday. So how do you get motivated to start and finish? You know, that is a very good question. I don't think I've ever been asked that question as an author in any conference I've ever been to. Uh, and there, there's almost no answer because, yeah. I mean, it's a self-motivation. Mm -hmm. It's something I wake up with every day. I, I can't wait to write the next story. I, I'm, I'm always thinking about the, the next story. Um, and as soon as I'm finished, I, I can't wait to write the next one. Yeah. And I've already got that idea I'm, I'm working it out in my head when I'm driving or walking or, or going out for an evening walk. I'm like, oh, I could do this. Oh, this is great. I can't wait to get back to my computer to, to type up that scene or something. Um, it really just comes from within. It, it's, I, I, there's nothing, there's no magic bullet or something I could say about motivation other than uh, it has to be organic or, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Geez, I, I wish I had a better answer for that one, but I, I'm just extremely motivated to write every like I, I write like a crazy man ever mm -hmm. since I can remember. But it's always been I was writing when I was in fact, before I even knew how to write before I even knew what words look like or how to spell before yeah. I even went to school. I was mm -hmm. three and my sister caught me with her textbook because she had an older sister in school. I had her textbook out and a blank piece of paper and a pen, and I was copying all the words down. I had no idea what I was writing though, because I didn't know how to read yet. But I, I had such an intense burn to write that I was writing before I could read. Mm -hmm. So, um, <laughs> I, 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 that, I don't know where the motivation comes from. All I yeah. know is that I just want to write as much as I can, as fast as I, I've written over 40 novels now. Yeah. And uh, I just passed my 50s. I'm looking at another 40. 50 novels before I get into my mid 60s. I'm, I'm writing up to seven, six, six books at least a year. Uh, yeah. Last year I wrote nine, mm -hmm. but I, I write a lot every day. Sometimes oh. two weeks in a row, nonstop, five, 5,000 words a day or more. Uh, I just have to keep writing. So where does that motivation come from? I've no, it's, a, it's a fire that's getting eternal fuel. Um, so I think that mot what motivates other writers, uh, it just has to come from within. I really don't know an answer for that. Good. And when you're doing something that you love, you don't have to be motivated to do it. Mm. You, just, you just do it. And uh, you love writing. Oh, way too much. I'm addicted. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. That's very good. So yeah. you better if you want to write, you better be addicted to writing. Now, uh let's talk uh let's talk about style for a while. Uh Christina is asking any suggestions on how to invest your own personal writing style? So uh, style is broad. Can you tell us about that? Develop well, it, embed. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Style. I are, are we talking about writer like the voice, writer's voice? Because voice and style for me, um, the best way is to write. You need yeah. to write a lot because as you write, I give an example for what I'm saying. It, as you write, your style and your voice develops naturally. This just mm -hmm. happens to you. Um, in the beginning, we often try to emulate other writers. In the very beginning, um, writers we idolize, we end up sometimes trying, some of us, not all of us, but I know I did a little bit of this in the beginning. Um, we try to emulate the writers that we idolize and we try to write mm -hmm. like them. So what I'm saying is that the more I wrote, the more I found my voice. So here's my example. Um, because I love to say Stephen King, uh, I love uh, Dean Koontz, John Saul, um, other writers that are writing horror. When I first mm -hmm. started writing, I was writing horror. Um, but it didn't fit right with me. It didn't sit right with me. After a couple of years of writing horror novels, uh, horror yeah. short stories and so on, um, I realized that it, that wasn't my voice. That wasn't my style. Mm -hmm. But it, I only figured that out though through the process of writing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that to find your style or your voice, you, you need to just write. And you will naturally fit into who you are. Uh, I believe that because thriller is where I'm naturally at. I, I don't write yeah. horror anymore. In fact, I've written so much thriller now. I've done eight, nine years, uh, you know, 35 plus novels of just thrillers that um, mm -hmm. if I ever tried to write horror again, which I have no interest, but if I tried, I, f I think it would be very challenging where in the beginning, I thought that was my voice or my style, but it was. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. So it's good that you can you, you, you say that you can invent your own style and you can also improve on your style. And that's the question that uh, Christina was asking. So thank you very much. Seems that uh, your internet has an issue just about when you are to get finished. Uh, so yes, we lost Jonas for a little while. He'd, he'd warned us about this. <laughs> so don't be worried, he'll be coming back soon. So he says that you can invent your own style or you can improve on the style that you have and live to the standards of the reader, the one who are waiting to read your uh, books. So Christina, great life. Thank you, Anthony and Jonas, all the best wishes. Thank you very much, Christina. We really appreciate you staying here all this time from the beginning to this point. And um, Bill is asking a question which uh, Jonas could answer once he comes back. So thank you very much, all those who are watching, all those who are watching the recorded version. Yeah, people are going to watch the, the recorded version. And thank you very much. If you have not read my book, please make sure that you buy my book. And um, also Jonas Souls books, uh, get to buy them. You can always find them from jonassoul.com or you can go to Amazon and search for Jonas Soul. And uh, yes, get to buy his books. So buy our books. And um, yes, thank you very much, Christina, for the best wishes. And everybody else who's here, I really appreciate you in a great way. If you have any other question that I could answer before I sign off, uh, Jonas is back. Jonas is back as well, coming back to, to wind up. Uh, yes, uh, so welcome back, Jonas. Uh, so, uh, Bill, thank you also for staying here. Welcome back. Uh, you had warned us, so we are, we are okay with that. <laughs> you had given us a warning.
There, yes, I'm back, but I'm on 4G data because my internet's completely gone now. Okay, no problem. We are actually just about to wind up. We have about five other minutes, but before you leave, okay. before we ask you for your final word on this uh, journey of uh, authorship, <laughs> that's the word? <laughs> yes. What is your thoughts for first authors going through self-publishing platforms like Lulu? Uh, uh -oh. I think maybe you didn't get it. Did you get it? No, I didn't. It froze on me. I'm so sorry. No problem. I'm going to repeat the question. The question is from Bill and he's asking, what is your thought for first authors going through self-publishing platforms like Lulu? I, I don't know much about Lulu. I've heard good things about Lulu. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you hear me okay? Yes, okay. we can hear you. Um, oh, perfect. Um, I work with Amazon um, for mm -hmm. most of my, and 90, Believe it or not, 98% of my sales come from Amazon. Yeah. Um, so I work with Amazon almost exclusively. They have been very kind to me. They invited me down to Seattle in 2014 in March, and I, I went down and toured the offices. Um, Amazon's done promotions with me. Once they start seeing your sales, they help your sales. Um, they send okay. out... Uh, Great emails for me. They, I just got an email on Sunday from Amazon uh, sending out an email to all my readers for me. It's all free. They, I don't pa pay for any mm -hmm. of this. Um, so I work with Amazon, okay. but I also work with Smashwords. Smashwords is a great company that will then do a bunch of distribution for you. You can get on the iBook mm -hmm. store. You can get onto Barnes & Noble, Bakers & Taylor, Overdrive Script. You can get onto all these places just by using Smashwords one, one stop one-stop shop mm -hmm. and all these places will collect the royalties and give them to Smashwords and Smash, Smashwords sends you um, royalties through PayPal. Uh, so okay. I find um, working just with Amazon and Smashwords really benefits me. It mm -hmm. minimizes the amount of work I have to do as an author because uh, I'd rather spend my time writing. Yeah. Um, so I only have two dashboards to work with. Um, I used to have a Barnes and Noble account. I used to work with Apple iBooks. I used to do all these on my own. Um, yeah. But what happened was anytime I'd had to do an update to a book or something came up and I needed to do a re-upload re of something, I had to go to every place and do it. Where now I just go to Amazon, quickly do it. I go to Smashwords, quickly do it. I'm done. Smashwords sends yeah. it out to everywhere. So those are the places I use. I've heard wonderful things about Lulu though. Uh, mm -hmm. I... ah. So thank you very much. Uh, and Yes, we are just about winding up. Uh, so, Bill, you got that answer. You can start on Amazon, which, uh, oh, 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 I mean, you can start on Amazon and uh, smash words, smash words, yeah? <laughs> and yeah. yes, yeah. And smash words, can, yeah. Smash words. So, and uh, yes, thank you very much. Maybe you'll give us a parting shot but before then i would like to mention one despina despina p square uh, is uh, thanking us he's saying the conversation was really interesting and inspiring and um we have okay we have another another uh, request another comment that has come in so uh, we can join with that as you give us the parting shot, uh, parting shot. Helen Kairetu says, I need help with selling with Amazon. I tried to join them, but when they asked me my bank account, I was scared. <laughs> Jonas? So she, I, I heard some of that, I think. Something about Amazon trying to make some sales and something about her bank account. Yes, because she was asked uh, to give her bank account and then she got scared. I don't know why she got scared. Oh, so they because they need the bank account information to pay your royalties. Uh, they do a direct yeah. deposit, um, mm -hmm. if that's what she's discussing, if that's what she means. Um, yeah, there's nothing to fear there. I, I have, uh, they have, they have access to my, all my royalties get paid directly to my bank account. Okay. 
Although I discovered as I am publishing on Amazon that uh, there are some areas that uh, direct deposits are not available, so they'll have to send you a check or something like That's that. That's right. Yeah. So Kairetu, if you are somewhere that they don't accept the banks, you can request to for them to send you a check to where you are for your loyalties. That's right. Yeah, so in conclusion, Jonas, give us a parting shot. Well, let me say, uh, you know what? This is about writing. Uh, whether you want yeah. to be extra successful as a professional author or you just want to write stories for your family to read, whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. just keep doing it. Amazon offers a free platform to load your book. Uh, if you just want it for your friends and family, do that. They can, you can even get it up there in print and you know, everyone can read your story. It could be um, memoir or biographical, or if you're writing thrillers like I do and you want to be successful, then, then write another one and another one and keep uploading them. Uh, really at the end of the day, my parting shot is uh, stay motivated and keep writing. Uh, unless you're doing what uh, Anthony's done, his book, Be Good for Good. Uh, terrific book and it's doing well and I'm wherever a lot of people are excited about the second one so Anthony has to write a second one now <laughs> <laughs> yes I have to write a second one and I'm saying I'm calling for those who have not read the first one to go and buy the first one be good for good it's on Amazon or my website antony.com and uh, those who have not seen John Assault books you can uh, go and Oh, you you actually have it right there. Is and uh, be good for good and by yeah. Anthony Perori. and also John has uh, sold books. Go and buy them, and uh, yes, let's keep on moving. So, uh, Helen Kairetu says thank you. Bill Riglis, that is Vasily's voice, says thank you guys. Great live, uh, great advice, guys. As always, we have. Um, uh, Rian Bardet is saying hi, Jonas Soul. I think he's your friend. Rian Bardet is saying oh. hi, Jonas Soul. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> yes. Um, so, say uh, Yasas is in Greek. That is uh, bye bye. Thank you very much, each and every one of you who have watched us this uh, live. And those who are going to watch the recorded version, you can get the YouTube channel book place. It's going to be uploaded there as, as soon as I can. So thank you very much, each and every one of you. Mary Mwangi, thank you very much, and every other person. Thank you, and thank you, Jonas, very, very much. And thank you. Yeah, and uh, have a beautiful evening. You too. Take care. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay. Thank you.